Hey, good day everybody, this is Sports Fanatic News, I'm Joe Boric, and this is going to be the latest edition of the Ghostly Take, where we talk about Max Willman continuing to play like a rocket that does not stop, absolutely flies on the ice, playing a better two-way game as he grows and matures, and still kicking butt on offense as he got the team leading seventh goal last year, as he's coming off of, of course, um, winning the PSECU um, player of the week for our Lehigh Valley Phantoms tied with Jackson Cates with two shorthanded goals. Phantoms are honestly better shorthanded than they are in the power play. They have no power in their power play. Um, so he was able to do that and provide again for this Lehigh Valley Phantoms team to get a player of the week tally there. Of course, also for a Phantoms team, a guy that is playing very well um, is Morgan Frost, who is just playing a very good, complete game. Four points in seven games, but again, yesterday had a chance in the high slot. Somebody <clears throat> that is playing a much better 200-foot game, stopping guys at the blue line, playing a complete game on both ends of the ice, using his speed to cut off passing lanes, and then draw a rush the other way, like he um, actually had the ability to do pretty much since the jump. It's just now he's being able to fully develop into that, getting, I guess, you could say, the right development to be able to become that full 200-foot guy, which is how the Flyers want to implement any of their players when it comes to being an A-B system. And most teams really want to implement a lot of players. If you look around the league nowadays, unless if you're just that sexy on offense, you don't typically have the one-dimensional Phil Kessels um, as plentiful anymore around the league when you look. Because even, obviously, a guy early in his career, and Alex Ovechkin didn't give a rat's petunia about defense, started really caring once Trotz got there, and once he won his cup, he's been actually much better at defense. And then, obviously, when I was watching the Capitals game the other night, he even worked his butt all the way back to get on an opposing rush. So, he's a player that plays a much better complete game himself now. But this Phantoms team, the biggest issue for them is we wrap up this edition of the Ghostly Take after Max Willman continues to kick butt, Morgan Frost continues to kick butt, and also Logan Day continues to look good as a defensive, as a good solid defensive, keep it uh, kind of steady Eddie defenseman that just does everything you need and is never going to make you just glamour over him on the ice, but just does all the simple things, makes the good poke checks, reads the play well on the defensive end, and then is able to also make a nice pass to move it up the other end. He's continuing to do that. But the key to this is the Phantoms, I believe their power play was in the teens percentile. Then they give up two shorties to McCormick to add salt to the wound from their power play doing nothing. They have no power in power play. Um, <clears throat> when I asked Cal O'Reilly about it yesterday, he said there's not really one specific thing, basically paraphrasing, in the press conference to be able to fix a power play. It's kind of just uh, everybody working together, and it's just, I I mean, I guess, this is me talking now, but like, I guess keep it simple, stupid, and just fire the shots on net, dirty but good, get the goals Mike Canubel scored, get the goals that you always see Brad Master and Marshan score, excuse me, as much as obviously us Flyers fans hate those goals being scored. You got to get the dirty but good goals a lot of the times in order to win in this league, including obviously in the AHL, not only the NHL, and that's something that the Phantoms have the players do. You got Brendan Sonia who's good in front of the net. You got Hayden Hodgins who's playing well and a good tough body in front of the net. You got Matthew Strom active who can be very good in front of the net. You got players that are <clears throat> very good, excuse me, in front of the net, as well as Cal O'Reilly who's good at deflecting the puck like he was able to do, as well as Max Woolman, who can also play wherever the hell you feel like slotting him. So you got players that can get the dirty but good goals. The Phantoms' power play is always overly cute. It's not executed well. It doesn't seem like it's coached well, because it doesn't seem like they have much of a strategy when they go on to every single power play. So if the Phantoms want to turn around this season, a big part of it is going to have to be the special teams, because... They're now 3-8-3, and 0-2-1 oh, in their last three. You don't want to get back on a very bad skid again. They're 3-5-2 and two in their last ten. As the next team they play, the Rochester Americans, they play tomorrow at 7-5 in Rochester. 
is 6-4 and four in their last 10, but did lose their last game as 0-1, but they still have at least not a good one, but a four-goal differential in the positive, where after yesterday's game, the Phantoms lost another one and went in the negative by one more for a minus 11 goal differential after they dug themselves their hole and then had to try to come all the way out of it, which they almost did, but then Connor Carrick got the win. So it's about, I don't even know what to say, it's about playing a simpler power play, just getting the pucks to the net and trying to get the dirty but good goals. That's really all I can think of for the power play, but it's easier, I guess, said than done, but it's also about just, I guess, strategizing better because when you watch the Phantoms power play, they look more dangerous on a penalty kill generating chances than they do on a power play, and that is unacceptable. That is something you love to see on the jump and opposite end, jumping to the opposite end for the PK, because the PK is playing really well at an 80-something percent clip, and also is then scoring on the other end of the puck with Cates and Wilman leading the league in shorthanded goals, tied each, each tied with two, I believe it is. So, you have a good penalty kill. You just have the exact opposite on the power play, and it's time to figure it out. It's time to maybe shake it up. It's time to maybe put different forwards on the point and allow different guys to move down low so you can have the guys like Frosty or Wilman fire it from up top and then lead the guys like Hodgson, uh, Sonia, um, <clears throat> Matthew Strome, and others in front of the net to be those net front presence that get those Mike Knubel dirty but good type goals. So everybody have a great, safe, and pleasant day. This has been the latest edition of the Ghostly Take. Wilman won the PSECU Player of the Week, rightfully so, as a positive and so far a not very positive season for the Phantom, and due to no small part to the very, 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 very off and bad power play early in the season. Peace out, everybody. Stay safe. This has been Sports Sag News. I'm Joe Boric. Let's go, Phantoms. Let's try to put that power and ghostly energy finally into the power play on Friday. Peace out, everybody.